We are now talking to New York Post feature reporter Alex Mitchell. Alex, what's up, bud? What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me on. Really happy to be here. Really thrilled to be on the show. We're really happy. We some news with the Yankees. Mm. Very great news with the Giants. I know you're a big fan, as I just heard a couple <laughs> minutes ago. And uh, Islanders shut out the Rangers. So, ah, um, yes. Well, actually, I'm the Giants fan. He's the Islander fan, and he's the Yankee fan. So. Perfect, perfect. So, I was at the Islander and Ranger game yesterday. I was oh, sitting. Wonderful. I was I was in a beautiful seats. I was in perfect seats in the in the dime area, the diamond area. I was eating free food. It was beautiful, and I got a chance to watch Sorokin shut. Down the New York Rangers. Rawr. I loved it. Yes. Yes. Oh. All the crowd screaming and the Ranger friends <laughs> drinking beer when they left. And as you saw, there was no fighting. You know why? Because the Rangers had nothing to fight about because they got shut out. <laughs> It was great. It was fun. And by the way, the person that I went with, the beef, we call him, he was crying and scratching. I'm surprised he didn't jump off a ledge and kill himself. I'll be, the Rangers played great. They outplayed the Islanders in that game, and I'll tell you that right now. I'm, I'm sorry I'm taking over your spot, but they completely tormented the Islanders, and it was just because of the great Sorokin on why they won that game. That's just my opinion. Uh, as everybody knows, we are talking to New York Post feature reporter Alex Mitchell. So why don't we get into it, my friend? We talked a little Yankees with Mr. Goodman, so why don't we get into your thoughts this offseason. Where do the Yankees go? Do they let go of Judge? Do they let him go to San Francisco? Does Brian Cashman come back? Because we know Hal said that Aaron Boone will be back. So where do the Yankees go this offseason? That is a million-dollar question, or perhaps a couple of million, probably several hundred million dollars for Aaron Judge. I think that, and I believe Cashman's quoted saying that, you know, Judge has a pot of gold waiting for him this this offseason. Personally, in my opinion, I think it's a bring back at all cost move. Now, whether or not Judge wants to, maybe he does want to go out to California. He was born and raised there. He's married. Maybe he that's where he wants to raise his family, closer to home, closer to where he grew up. And I mean, going back to hockey, it, that's what Wayne Gretzky did when he left Edmonton. Nobody thought he would ever leave Canada for, for sunny Southern California. You know, maybe Judge goes to Northern Cal, but it's it's very possible. But on the other hand... You're never going to have an experience outside of New York like you would, even playing somewhere like the Giants or the Dodgers, which I saw today there was some speculation about the Dodgers. And I think every single day you're going to see speculation about every single team thinks that Judge is coming to him. The Mets are convinced that that Judge is coming, or at least a bunch of the fans on Twitter were after they were licking their wounds after that brutal, (laughs) brutal wild card. And, you know, Petey, my – my condolences. That, that was a really. Rough I don't one. think that. I don't think he's going to the bats. I didn't. I never labeled that. Okay, good. No, I'm not saying you were, but I. I did see a lot, and you know, it's it, it. That's what always happens. He's always coming to your team until he isn't. I think that there's a decent shot, and, and again, this is just spitballing. I, I used to actually, funny enough, I used to be in the press box with Max Goodman in the 2020 and 2021 seasons back when I covered the Yankees. A uh, different beat now, features still get to do some baseball. Interviewed David Cohn around this time last year, talked about food, but he also told me that of course time bread put him in a headlock once. That was a fun interview. <laughs> but, um, no, but uh, you know, just speculating. I think that there is still a large incentive for Judge to want to stay in New York. He will be the king here until the day he retires and then some more. So I don't know. I I would love it. I think that he brings a romance to baseball that's kind of been non-existent ever since, well, probably before the cheating scandal with the Astros. But (laughs) just no, there hasn't been that sort of feel or or passion for the game. Like, like, do you remember watching games that weren't playoff contingent Mm -hmm. with such fervor in the past 10 or something years? Oh, yes. Because I can't say I, I remember that. I, I remember a lot. I mean, Speedy's the baseball guy. He watches almost every game. He really uh, – he, he's a statistician, so he probably remembers more than me. But I can remember certain games that really stood out to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, just judge, at least for me, and, and you know, I didn't go to a lot of games after I took my new job and I stopped 
covering the team for many reasons, obviously busier. But, you know, it was emotional for me to get back in the stadium. But once Judge hit that chase for 60 and then 61, finally 62, it was no question. I had to get tickets in the bleachers. I had to be in home run alley. I just, you know, you had to see this. And he just, I don't know. There's there's almost an innocence that he brings to the game where whether you're you're 50, whether you're 20 year old, just you know, going in the bleachers, or you're a dad taking your kid, there's something you just want to see this guy play. And I I remember I was I was sitting in 106 one night where ironically enough, Alex Verdugo, number 99 on the Red Sox, hit a home run to our section instead, of course. <laughs> but um Judge comes out and he he wasn't playing right field until uh the seventh inning, and then he comes out, he jogs out, and he gets a standing ovation just for being who he is. And I think that that's something important, not just for the morale of fans, but that's got to be good for the locker room, I imagine. That's got to be good to have someone that an entire city rallies around. And a lot is not known about you know his private life or what he's like off the field, but from what we do know, he, he conducts himself like a class act. And I think that that's something important to hold on to. And then, of course, oh, yeah, probably going to add, you know, 30, 40 home runs a season, maybe mm-hmm. more. Who knows? Maybe that 62 is going to be broken one day. Mm-hmm. So, and I'd like oh, to see it broken in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so uh, my question is about the market value with Aaron Judge. Uh, it's rumored right now projected to start at eight years, $320 million from what uh, a couple of baseball writers have said. Do you think it'll get higher with, especially if teams like the Red Sox go into it? Because they're, they're going to want to steal it from the Yankees for sure. We've heard that. Uh, the Giants obviously being the favorites right now. What do you think will end up ultimately being the market value for them? That's a good question. Um, I I don't know, but I, I think that it would probably be maybe shorter than an eight-year contract, mm. but probably higher than 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 that many million, to be perfectly honest. Really? I, I, I think so. I think because, again, he is not just an asset to the team. He's an attraction to the city wherever mm. he goes. People will come out, and I, I saw this in September. Tourists were going to those Yankee games just to have a chance to see Judge play. People from from England, Ireland, Europe, who knew nothing about the game, you know, it, it's the same effect as like like seeing Leo Messi play soccer. Mm. You come out to see him, and I think that that is a major component here. At maybe it wouldn't be the same outside of New York, but at least here there is that phenomenon where he is. There are the Yankees, and then there's Aaron Judge. And you have him almost as a separate entity in a very exciting way. Interesting. Uh, We are talking to New York Post feature reporter Alex Mitchell. Let's get on to the Giants because uh, Uh the Giants are playing great football. Uh, I've been very impressed. And I could see why the Giants brought Dable in and why team the players are thriving to his game and what he's all about as a head coach reminds me of a young Tom Coughlin he really has the energy personality when he talks to the the press he's he's got that like pizzazz about him which I I really love I mean Judge was uh boring uh likes to point fingers type of head coach this guy, he doesn't want to point fingers. He, he he's funny. He he has you know he has a pretty you know pretty good look. I mean, he wears his Jordan sneakers when he's out on you know practice fields. I mean, there's just something about him that really shines. What have you seen when you have been around the Giants? What have you seen that really shines and really sticks out about him? You know, going back to what you said, he's like a Tom Coughlin Jr. And I think for fans, I think for anyone who's followed the Giants, that's a major plus. And I put myself in that category, too. I still was I still stamp my feet thinking about how the Giants let Coughlin go. I did not think that that was the right protocol. I did not think it was the way to go about him leaving. I I just still irks me to this day. And I think it still irks Eli Manning to this day. Mm -hmm. But Like you said about Dable, he takes accountability. That's something you haven't really seen with Shermer, with going back to McAdoo, with Judge. And he's just bringing in a new regime in a way that's familiar to the past, but not just familiar to the past, familiar to the past ways of winning. Mm -hmm. Coughlin won two Super Bowls with Eli Manning. Dable can easily do that with Daniel Jones, I think. And I had a conversation with a very good friend of mine about this, and it's amazing how quickly the Giants can change with the right leadership. Look at, and I mean, I know you've seen all the memes about the Giants have been three and eighty-two since the Miami boat trip and everything. That was such a stain on kind of on where the franchise was going. It, it felt like they didn't have the proper leadership. It felt like they didn't have the right direction. And now 
that's all but forgotten. I can't remember the last time I've been so excited about Giants football. The last two seasons, I'll be honest, and it takes a lot for me to even change a channel during the commercial break of a game. <laughs> I didn't want to watch the Giants because it was just making me sad. It was making me upset. I knew things were just not going to pan out, you know, whether it's Daniel Jones getting tackled by the field or, or whatever was going to happen. Um, but this year, it's just they're rocking, they're rolling. They got the running game right between Barkley and now Daniel Jones is a running threat. It's incredible to see. Mm. It really is something else and sky's the limit just win baby win that that's how i'm feeling about the giants <laughs> well i think daniel jones the whole philadelphia tripping on a self incident is still <laughs> is, is still a little bit of carried over from the giants voodoo in that stadium because i don't think they've won there since like 2013 chip kelly's first year it was like a 15 to 7 game or something there was a bad staff they got a safety on or something like that that's like the that buffalo been. wild wings commercial when the sprinkler comes up <laughs> yeah that sounds about right so a uh, uh, big news today with the giants the Kadarius tony trade they got a third uh, con- uh compensation pick i think the pick that the chiefs got for tyreek hill when they let him go and the sixth round pick for Kadarius tony what did you think of that move i don't mind it and honestly, right now, I kind of feel like Dable's going to find a way to make anything work. So it, it, it doesn't concern me too much. I We'll see what happens. I mean, I know that there's a, a lot of speculation now that the Giants may be going after Jerry Judy because of this. And I mean, if that works out, I, I think that would be huge. But even if it doesn't, I have, like I said, I have not, I don't remember the last time I had this much faith in what the Giants are doing. And, you know, maybe maybe some of it was luck, but not all of it. I, they are proving to themselves that they're a legitimate contender. And I just, like I said, just roll with it. Whatever's going on, it's working. Just, just. Keep at it. I I don't think that um I don't think that this trade's going to come back to haunt them yet. I I, I didn't like the trade. I think Kadarius uh, Kadarius is a good player. I, I watched him play in college at Florida, and I I, I really think they should have waited and see what he is with that offense when he was 100 percent healthy. I just I, I I didn't like it, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they do bring in Jerry Judy, and maybe maybe Jerry Judy works, and and the Giant fans will have something to cheer about, but. Maybe Odell Beckham is coming back. I mean, there are stories D- coming out. DJ Moore is another name that's been linked to the Giants. DJ too. Moore is another guy that we've heard as well from Carolina. Uh, as everybody knows, we are talking to New York Post featured reporter Alex Mitchell. So, uh, obviously, there's about a week left or a couple days left until the trade deadline. Do you see the Giants making a significant move that can help this team move forward? They are a playoff team. The NFC is weak. Uh, the, the, I believe the Giants, the Cowboys, and the Eagles make the playoffs this year. That's how bad the NFC is. What are your thoughts? Um, I, I think other than um, the potential move for Jerry Judy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm. Plain and simple. You got something working. You may not know exactly how it's working, but just <laughs> enjoy the merits of what's coming and just just keep stringing together wins. Beat the Cowboys this year on the road. That would be that'd be big, but. Uh, I think you're right. I, th- I think we might see three teams from the NFC East mm-hmm. back in the playoffs. And and that would stress me out because, you know, you look at the Giants only loss, it's to the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. And whew, I don't know. It's, it's fun to think about. It's exciting. I mean, you go back to the 2007 Super Bowl, beating them on the road in the divisional round, you know, it, it or even to 2011 when they, it was win to get in on New Year's Day. I'll never forget that either. <laughs> <It blew laughs> really yeah. Don't scare the Giant fans about the Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboy fans over here are crazy too, let me tell you. They're oh, nutty. They are nutty. Oh, okay. And, and, and the Cowboys, listen, I, I think they're a fairly good team. I think Dak Prescott makes them a little bit better. I think Zeke's, uh, you know, Zeke's playing decent football right now. And C.D. Lamb, if he stays healthy, if he stays healthy, I mean, they need to add another wide receiver. So I, 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 and by the way, Thibodeau has looked really, really good. He's definitely been better every single week. Is just slowly but surely maturing as a pass rusher, which is something to be excited for because everybody knows when the Giants were dominant. And remember, in the eighties and the nineties, the early nineties, when they were dominant and they went to they won those Super Bowls, and then even in the mid two thousands. And 2007, 2011, what they win, what, what they won with two good tackles and a good offensive line, great pass rushers and, you know, stray hand and uh, obviously O.C. Amignor and Justin, Justin Tuck. Tuck. I Chris mean, Chris Ganty. Yes. The list goes on. Yes. 
This is what the Giants need to do. They need to build the trenches.